Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and we are dealing with a lot of things that are going on tonight, friends. Uh, actually, Deborah Tavares had sent me this video right here, um, a million and a half views just from January the 7th. Uh, the three men in the video, Robert David Steele, Simon Parks, and Charlie Ward. Uh, also, I had gotten the, because of this video here, I did a little bit of looking into uh, Mr. Parks and his information, and he also re released this video today, 10th of January, just as the same as I'm making the video that you're watching now. And I'm going to play a clip for you because the information that Mr. Uh, Mr. Parks here, Simon Parks, has is very interesting. And uh, I reached out to my own sources there to do some um, corroboration of the information because the information is very similar to those things that I have been sharing with you. And, um, and also, he shared a little bit of information that I was not aware of that I wanted to speak about uh, as well this evening because I was able to get some clarification on some of the things that were said in this particular intel sharing meeting here. Um, one of the things that he goes into, uh, he actually hints around about it on January the 7th, like I did on January the 6th, in this video here, where the nation is headed. Um, because there was information I was asked not to release as of yet about things that the president was uh, planning, uh, his team was planning in order to keep him in power. And, uh, and I mentioned to you that it would have nothing to do with the, uh, the election fraud. At least that would be part of it. It would not be dealing with the election fraud. I want to play this little clip here for you. Just as a reminder, I did this on January the 6th of 2021. Listen to this. All by the reckless behavior of some political leaders since the election. <sighs> what do you know? So let's watch, though. Next week is going to be very interesting week. I, I told you guys that this would not be the time when anything would happen. I know a lot of people felt like oh, it's going to be where they're going to be able to overturn the election and get it back, give it back to Trump and stuff. And I said, nope, it's not going to be what's going to happen. Watch what happens next week. Now, I don't say that Trump's going to become president as a result, but they're going to really stir it up come next week. And things that are going to come out will shock you, I promise you. Uh, you know, they I say that Trump puts out these subliminal messages. Even in these, there are subliminal messages. Let me see if I can get it. Listen closely, then. Play it here. Listen into this here for a second. There we go. There it is. You hear that? Think of that. Okay, he's talking about pedophilia is what he was talking about. And I couldn't clearly hear everything that was being said on there, uh, but he is talking about pedophilia. And somewhere, let me just see, um, maybe this is it here. Um, yeah, this one right here. This was a tweet that President Trump, before his account was shut down, this was a tweet that he had actually... Um, retweeted himself, and I had mentioned in another video, uh, maybe the same one that I just shared with you, but I forget exactly where, um, that this tweet was a subliminal message. And Secretary Pompeo says, it uh, put, puts out this from the uh, from U.S. government account, it takes American leadership to end human trafficking around the world, saving lives and restoring hope. That's what great nations do. And then hashtagging leading from the front. This is actually one of the plans that is supposed to be initiated the week of the 11th, which is starting tomorrow. Uh, maybe by the time I get this video up, it won't be quite the 11th as of yet, but close to it. Uh, this is what's supposed to take place. And I can't keep in mind, things are fluid. Things are changing. I've been told there are one of four different paths that Trump would stay in power. And and when I say stay in power, you have to understand 
<laughs> every bit of this is a globalist agenda. Even if Trump is still remains in power, um, is it going to change anything? Is it going to change persecution to Christians? Is it going to change uh, this globalist agenda that, 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 is, uh, that is being made out there? No. This whole push to destroy this nation, to bring us under communism, is not going to be derailed. Israel is done with America, and we're on that course of destruction via their plans. Even when we talk about China, um, the president, I know, was given information by China. Uh, whether or not that comes out public or not, I don't know. But he was given information by China uh, that was the proof, both uh, the financial ties as well as a lot of other evidence that helped that will help to actually expose uh, Biden and others uh, that will include Hillary, Obama, and I think Hunter as well, Hunter Biden, uh, as well in this particular disclosure of documents. But whether or not that all that information will be released, whether or not it will be made public or not, I don't know as of yet. I know that the intention is that is one of the courses that would be taken. And so I was seeing those subliminal messages already being put out. And so uh, once um, I got this from Deborah, uh, this video here, not that video there, but when I listened to this one here on January the 10th that he put out today, Mr. Parks put, put out today, uh, I was seeing that he was already releasing the information. So I made the request to see if I could go ahead and share what I knew uh, also, and was given that permission to do so. Let me first, though, back up to the 7th of January when he did this, uh, Simon Parks did this video here with Charlie Ward and Robert David Steele. Let me play this little clip for you here. Ally doing this. So it changed the game completely. If it was Russia or China, it doesn't matter. But this is um, a, a government that the, the Italian government could fall. This could bring them down. It's also to do with, with the banking and, and that. So everything Charlie said, I totally agree with. Um, and the operation last night also, actually, I would just add, uh, Charlie, every legal option had to be tried, every legal thing, so that nobody could turn around and say to Trump, well, you didn't do this or you didn't do that. Um, and I know that Trump then went to Texas to one of the uh, command posts. And I can tell you that, what time is it now? five o'clock hour time for the last five or six hours there has been uh, uh, an incommunicado meeting in that base to decide what's going to happen um, well that that leads to the next question but let me also energize. i'm going to pause just for a moment on that i asked about that specific meeting there uh what went on there let me uh uh Actually, I'd asked about this particular video, period. Yeah, here we go right here. And the information that was shared with me here, as you can see, uh, about the trip to Texas. Trump did go to Texas directly after his speech at the rally before returning to the White House early Friday, at which point he went to Camp David and is still there. Now, that was still there as of earlier uh, this morning, I should say. Because this, uh, I actually got this email probably about 5:30 in the morning. Uh, he also is because he's in the video they talk about the laptops. He said, "I have confirmed that several laptops, including Pelosi's laptop, was illegally seized while um, while the acquisition of laptops have been confirmed. That several laptops, including okay, seized while the content is not officially permissible in court, but has thus far provided helpful information. The content is still being reviewed. Uh, also, the uh, point three, as we have previously discussed, I can confirm that Trump has no less than four paths from which to choose to defend his position. The challenge has been des uh, deciding on which paths are most bulletproof. Unexpected turn of events at the rally has delayed the decision as Team Trump is exercising great care in each step before the step is taken. And one thing I've been told quite extensively is you got to keep in mind, you never know what's going to happen. 
Uh, what will be the defense of the Democratic side, Biden's side? I've also been told that Biden's uh, team is also very much involved in um, uh, trying to get China to come in, that Biden has already reached out to China. Uh, and it's kind of funny because China has helped Trump with information against Biden, but yet Biden is reaching out to China to be able to try to get them to, to, to deal with what they perceive is going to be an insurrection, is going to be more violence, and they're wanting China to come in to help them to, uh, to put an end to that violence in the nation. So, sort of a United Nations force, something I'd mentioned to you as well recently in another video. And uh, as I told you that my uncle, when he shared that with me, they would come in as a peacekeeping force, but and it would be under the auspices of, of civil war, civil unrest in the nation here. But, uh, but the, you know, in reality, it's going to end up being uh, definitely not benevolent. It's going to be a very much a bloodbath trying to disarm the nation. I was told that there that, that is a very tempting offer for the Chinese to do so, although uh, the insider that I work with does not believe that that will happen. But it's possible. So keep that in mind. Uh, he also mentioned in the video there was talk dissolving of the fun, fundamentally the restructuring of the United States. He said, I've confirmed that this idea is not considered as being viable as it because of the enormous legal implications, both at the state and federal levels would require either years of litigation, hearing appeals, which would also likely result in civil war or wars or the complete overthrow, which would require for an invasion of some sort. There again, we're getting back to the, this Chinese issue that we're talking about. Uh, he goes on to say, as I read in the green, it should be noted that under the Obama administration, there was such a plan to start the process of dividing up the country, starting with Executive Order 13528, establishing the Council of Governors. Under the auspices of improving federal-state relationships, uh, processions when FEMA was called into action, there was strong pushback from a variety of people and groups, even though the approach was very soft first step. Executive Order 13528 was to, fo to be followed uh, carefully, uh, to be followed carefully, crafted bills that would be periodically released to slowly increase the power of the 10 districts, including the requirement to have a visa in order to travel from one district to another, much like China, Russia, and the other socialist type countries one way or another. I do not, I do see this coming post-Trump. So, very much believing, though, that Trump is going to, to remain in power, although that's not a 100% guarantee, uh, but that is still the consensus that he's going to stay in power. Uh, I've also was told tonight that uh, Trump will not, or excuse me, there will not be an inauguration for uh, Joe Biden. And I also asked about the Insurrection Act because someone else had pointed out in a video that somebody said that Trump did sign the Insurrection Act. Although that would not be directly answered to me, um, it was put in such a way to where the answer is yes. The president definitely has signed the Insurrection Act. Um, so we can expect seeing him seize power. Um, martial law that I, I was told would not be a nationwide event. Uh, under because I was very concerned about uh, if we go under martial law under an insurrection act, knowing that the military already wants to vaccinate everybody um, uh, mandatorily, how would that work out if we end up going under martial law? We're going to also be under forced vaccination. I was told though that that would not be the case in, in, uh, under this particular I incident because the Insurrection Act was only going to be used in, uh, uh, in a limited sense. That it would also, it would be used to where he would take control of those states that have defrauded the election. So we could expect to see, uh, in this case here, we would expect to see um, uh, martial law and troops on the ground in states such as Georgia, Arizona, uh, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. This would be where we would see those things coming uh, coming to play and that he would seize power, which would also put a stop to any government employees, senators, whatever it may be, congressmen, judges and stuff. They're not allowed to delete or shred any documents, uh, but that has been done. They are prepared for that event there.
Let me continue on just a little bit more in this video right here, and then we're going to jump to the other one there uh, where Mr. Simon Parks is uh, speaking. Jack Charlie's won his bet. Um, at 1 o'clock, I'm interviewing Cynthia McKinney to discuss this having been a NATO Gladio covert operation fully funded by the United Kingdom uh, and with the complicity of Germany and France. Uh, this is a huge, huge thing. And the military industrial complex is the one using NATO as a front to take down the president. At least that's what I think Cynthia is going to say. All right, here's my second question. This time we'll reverse it and we'll ask Simon to answer first in three minutes. What's going to happen between now and the 20, 20th of January? If, if the people, the same people that convinced Trump to stand as president, if they are as good as their word and they don't betray him, then there will be an executive order, there will be martial law, there will be arrests, and President Trump will be reset for another four years. I did that within three minutes. Yes, you did. And I. Okay, so an executive order, martial law, and there will be arrest. Now, Simon only alludes to it. He doesn't say what those arrests are going to be, but it is going to be over pedophilia. Today, he does speak about that. Let's play this one here. Ten minutes, then every five minutes. That was the original plan, a sort of a countdown. That's what the military wanted. That didn't happen in the end because events overtook what was to happen. Uh, eight days ago, I was told to expect this action not yesterday, but uh, Wednesday to come. So I wasn't expecting this until, you know, three days or so time. Uh, and I had a whole plan laid out to alert all my coordinators uh, for them to pass it on to the members and then, you know, to, to the general public. Uh, that plan went out the window because uh, this operation was brought forward. Um, I need to explain to you what's happened, why that's had to be brought forward. Uh, those of you who've done your research, and those of you who haven't, have a good look. You'll know that Pakistan suffered a huge power outage, uh, about 40% of the country. That's a big country. 40% of the country was out. Uh, the main thing I'm trying to look at on this right here is the fact that um, things are changing, of course, naturally, but he knew about the information but could not speak about it. I need to try to see if I can fast forward as to, to the right place for that. So let me see if I get some more information for you. Uh, and can you imagine uh, if you were in the United States Air Force or any European Air Force and you should go to war with China? Minister has been arrested. Uh, I can tell you that, that uh, I, I've only had one report, and those of you who know me, that we don't go live with you guys until I have two uh, independent reports telling me the same thing. I cannot confirm that the Italian Prime Minister has been arrested. Uh, I can tell you that, that it is true that an Italian judge signed a warrant for his arrest and also signed a warrant for the arrest of a very high-ranking leading um, general who was responsible for the Leonardo or Leonardi uh, satellites. The Italian government is up to their neck in this, but a deal is trying to be done with the United States or with Trump to say that, um, can we please say that the Leonardi satellites were hacked? Therefore, it absolves the Italian government from um, prosecution. And I think the Americans might be saying, yes, okay, we'll accept that, but you've got to arrest X, Y, and Z. So that's what's happening in Italy. Uh, there was a a considerable when he's talking about the Italian prime minister, I did get one report, although I cannot confirm that independently, kind of like uh, Mr. Parks, I like that to use two sources when I'm dealing with issues like that, unless it is specifically one source that I have where I don't have any question about the integrity of that information. Uh, but I did get one report in that, yes, uh, he was arrested. Or power outage in Berlin. Um, don't be surprised because we had all the Dominion servers in Frankfurt in Germany and there was some administrative stuff in Berlin that had to be dealt with. That's that. There is a curfew in Quebec <clears throat> from uh, 8. Still Here's the exciting news. Well, it's all exciting, isn't it? But the Insurrection Act was signed last night. Okay, here we go. And that is why I got the that. message. This is not a drill. So the Insurrection Act has been signed by the President. 
uh, do not expect President Trump to bother to go to Congress to be inaugurated. Uh, you American guys and lasses will know very well it's not the first time that a president has been inaugurated in the White House. And I'm expecting the president to be inaugurated in the White House. Um, in terms of uh, Britain, uh, I also got a message. The, the people who uh, are, uh, you know, looking after me, can I put it like that, uh, know where I live. And they've said that um, they are expecting some power outages in the United Kingdom. Uh, not for very long, but it could affect uh, the pumps, the water pumps. The pump. Okay, we'll have to get into that issue there later. The main thing I want you to be able to see is, one, he mentions the Insurrection Act here. Uh, he, you do get into the video, he is going to talk about the other arrests and things like that that will be made. And like I had said, here we had already been sharing with you that um, trying to do it indirectly, more like I said, of a subliminal message, uh, and, and I'm just trying to see if I actually put in there by looking at the screen monitor here in the bottom there. Uh, if this was the video I did where Mike Pompeo where the, where, or where the president was actually tweeting um, that, um, uh, I don't think it was this video here, it wasn't, I can see that now. So it may have been an earlier video because I was trying to give little hints here and there what was coming, what the plan was. And I'll say, like I said, it's one of four options. And I've been told tonight that more than likely two, at least two of the options will actually be used. Uh, and, but I also was told that the initial arrests that you will, that, that would begin, you may not see them publicly. Um, they may be a little bit low key and it may be, uh, lower, uh, lower, um, what would you call it? Lower fruit on the vine, right? So I don't know for sure exactly how that's going to play out, but I wanted to make sure I shared that with you guys there. Uh, this here is a video I did back on August 17th, and this is where I was talking about the CIA bringing in weapons from Italy. And I just brought this up again only as a reminder that uh, the situation, of course, being very volatile. Uh, and there is great concern that patriots and the militia um, – will begin to try to take matters into their own hands and fight back to try to keep Trump in power. I cannot stress enough that this is a very bad idea. Um, the Pentagon source that I have does not, as clear, clearly, and of course, works with the president, um, has said to me, it's the worst thing that could happen. It will only play into the hands of the Democrats if you get in to trying to fight. And I put this video up here because on this one here, I talk about the CIA had been smuggling weapons in from Italy into the United States, into the hands of Antifa, uh, Black Lives Matter, into uh, into a bunch of uh, uh, drug drug dealing groups and stuff to help fight against the patriots in this country. And this is what they want you to do. They want to be able to disarm this nation. And that's why I've also said too, you know, I don't trust either side when it comes down to it. Doesn't matter if it's Trump or not. To me, this still is a situation that I feel like has been orchestrated from the beginning and it's to pit the two sides against one another. But when I'm dealing with my own inside information on this, uh, you know, it's, it's you're talking about a good man that knows that this would be the worst thing that could happen and would tell you, don't get involved in it. Don't be a part of that. Uh, let the le legal system of what they're trying to do prevail. That's what they're really hoping that the American people would do. And I was told that um, when the situation went down there in Washington and they had the run on uh, the Capitol, that this was something that was disturbing to see. They didn't expect it to go to that link there. Uh, I still think that a lot of that is planned, though. I think that's part of the PSYOP operation. And, uh, and, and after all, let's face it, they got the laptops. Was that an orchestrated event? It seems to be that way. Uh, but uh, I've not, that's not been confirmed to me that that was the case, although the information has been very helpful, as I was told. Let me play a little bit of this just for a reminder. Gutted airplanes. Uh, 
that if if we understand right, it's a, it's a CIA operation, or at least an alleged CIA operation, flying gutted passenger airliners full of weapons from Italy back here to the United States. I cannot help but wonder what in the world they are really doing this for. What's the purpose? What's the plan? And, of course, why Italy? Just wanted to make sure you were able to see that information there. Uh, another thing I asked about as well, though, was because of the National Guard being called up. And I'm thinking to myself, well, Trump supporters have pretty much left Washington. How would that work out in a situation like this? Is the president bringing them in there because of signing the Insurrection Act, etc.? cetera? Uh, I was told no, uh, not in that case. This is normally dealt with by the governor, even though Washington, D.C. is a state within a state, so to, be, so to speak. But if the president were to do uh, need to bring up any type of force, he will actually bring the military up uh, or a federal National Guard that he has control over. But then again, if he's done the Insurrection Act, uh, he could take control of the troops there in Washington as well. And he said that he does have the majority of the troops on his side. Um, anyway, so, and I also had put up here where uh, uh, Matt Gantz, this, of course, many of you already know about this, was I speaking hear my about. Democrat colleagues calling to defund the police. Some pretty compelling evidence from a facial recognition company showing that some of the people who breached the Capitol today were not Trump supporters. They were masquerading as Trump supporters and in fact were members of the violent terrorist group Antifa. Now we should seek to build America. And Democrats didn't like that too much, did they? So, but it was true. That was the whole thing. It was true. Uh, so anyway, thank Mississippi Patriot for sending that to us there, uh, that information there. Uh, kind of moving on into another area right here that I want to bring up to you. This is still, and this is actually still another option that is a possible option, but it has also been downplayed not to be used, and that is a war, the war option. And uh, now, of course, I have up here uh, for you, this is not because of the article, this just happens to be Igor Kostyokov. He is the head intel, um, Russian intel man for Russia. He was just in Iran, in Tehran, Iran. He met with some of the top generals of the Iranian government. Uh, that was just this past weekend. You're not going to find this, uh, by the way, on mainstream media anywhere. Um, in fact, some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you, you're not going to find out there, regardless of how much you might try to search. If you do, it'd be great. I'd love to know it because I like to try to find things that corroborate the information. But I had been given this uh, information that he had been meeting there with uh, with the uh, the Iranians. And uh, let me just kind of let's see. I think I can share that with you. Um, uh, go back here. Hmm. Here we go, right here. No, that's not it either. Ah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. The uh, this I just received this uh, yesterday. However, the chief intelligence officer of the Russian Federation was in Tehran last weekend, and he met with some of the most influential generals in the Revolutionary Guard. According to him, the U.S. forces in the Middle East have changed their posture from defensive one into an offensive one. This has been collaborated by intel from the ground. So he said the Russians believe an attack was imminent. Uh, what has freaked them out? Uh, is the type of preparation Americans are pursuing. It is if they want to have an all-out attack. Personally, I believe they are in. Uh, they they will try to eliminate Iran's capability to respond at once. If they succeed, it would be great. If they don't, they still have inflicted a crushing blow to the Iranian war machine. But the decapitation or decapitated Iran might still be strong enough to destroy Dubai, Bahrain, and attack American bases. I believe the events in Washington have delayed the plan, but only delayed. Uh, I, tr I did cross-reference this information, and of course the it was true. The, the head chief intel did meet with the Iranians, the um, that, that it was very true as well. But I wanted to know as far as an imminent attack. 
And one of the things that was shared with me, and maybe I put that in here as well for you. Um, uh, yeah, this right here. This is one of the options that has been bouncing around for a while now and is a major reason behind Pelosi wanting to revoke Trump's nuclear launch access. When asked, most of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, as well as area, uh, area experts like me, oppose first strike options. That said, there are plenty of reasons that crippling Iran is important. Officially, at this point, there is no first strike plan. Now, I will tell you, though, uh, in light of that particular information right there, uh, I made the statement back, Israel will no doubt help facilitate uh, that first strike plan for you. That information was confirmed. And uh, although the Joint Chiefs of Staff and although Trump is not going to initiate that either, that is still a very much tabled option, and that may very well happen. So the war being imminent, as the Russians believe, seems to really be the case. Uh, and uh, just like we said before, because I know there were some people saying, well, you said imminent and nothing actually happened. There's something also that Mr. Parker addressed when he was talking about Intel. He said, Intel is Intel. Intel is fluid. Things change. And you got to keep that in mind. There is no guarantee with Intel because things are constantly changing on the ground. Even in the situation with Trump staying in power, I've been told many, many, many times that he would be still a two-term president, even when it didn't look like he could be. Uh, but then I began to waver, thinking it's not going to happen. And still, I don't know 100%, but even my own source began to waver on that because it was becoming so volatile with the situation, seemingly to spin out of control. But now it seems that even he's gone back to, yes, he's going to remain in power one way or the other. He's going to remain, not 100%, but still very high probability that he will. And uh, But we know that things can change, and there's no way of knowing for sure which way things are going to go because we don't know really and truly what that end game is that they're planning. Uh, but yes, it is, it is believed to be that this war is going to start. And I have a feeling, because you've got to keep in mind, the people that put Trump in power are those elite people like the Soros and Kissingers uh, of the world. And, uh, and if they need him to stay in power to carry out their war for their Messiah figure, which we believe has already arrived for them, then they're going to make sure Trump stays in power and that he does this war because they need him as a Mashiach ben Yosef so that their Mashiach ben David can then come on the scene. So, like I said, everything is orchestrated. Don't think for a moment that, uh, that we're going to get a savior out of Trump. I know a lot of people get to thinking like that. He's not. Jesus Christ is the only savior. And we really need to make sure we keep our minds and our thoughts and things on that. Uh, kind of speaking about the situation earlier, uh, thank you, Charles, for sharing this with me as well, about these particular places being destroyed um, by Iran, specifically Bahrain and um, and the and and uh, uh, the uh, goodness, I'm forgetting the name of the other the other country there. Uh, I thought it was interesting. It says the Gulf crisis ends. Saudi Arabia and Qatar will open their borders and air spaces. United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Egypt will lift embargoes on Qatar. Qatar will abandon all the lawsuits. And Kushner will attend the signing of the Gulf deal. Now, I brought this one up right here because now they're all starting to work together. Well, I'd gotten also, uh, you know, when I saw that, that Iran would go after Bahrain, and I believe it was Qatar, uh, then I got the three countries instead they would destroy because they're consider, all considered traitors. And so it's kind of interesting that those countries are also being mentioned here by Amichai Stein uh, as, oh, they're doing this great thing, working together. They're, they're, they're all coming together to, to join up with Israel. Yeah, well, Iran is planning on destroying them for, for, for betraying Iran. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of where we're going to end it at today. We're going to be talking about some very disturbing things tomorrow. 
Uh, sometime tomorrow, be me and uh, me and my wife. We were going to actually do some today, but we've just really been tied up trying to get this information, these loose ends tied uh, tied up for you on the situation that's going on um, with the president and releasing this information to the public. Uh, so that's kind of held us up a little bit, but we wanted to get that in information to you. But there are some very very serious and disheartening information uh, that's been shared with us uh, in relations to. Uh, this pandemic that's been going on. Um, and I say that, especially in light of a good friend of mine sent me a message, uh, a good friend of his there, his sister is a doctor in California. And I'll be sharing with you that information. Two of the nurses there uh, have since passed away, since uh, being, how would you call that? Stuck. We'll use the word stuck because everybody else is using that J word. And I don't want you to, I don't want anybody to pick up what we're talking about there. Two have died. And also there are people between 55 and 72 years old after being stuck uh, in their arm there have, are also suffering with heart attacks. So we put together a lot of information, things like that, what doctors are saying and why this neo-Nazi, uh, you know, Nazism that is trying to control the media is not telling you the truth. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for supporting our broadcast. We appreciate your support, your love. You can see right there at the top of your screen our mailing address here in Sunbright, Tennessee. And uh, also, don't forget EMPShield.com. I've noticed a lot of people have been continuing to get the EMP Shield. Um, don't forget about that. I think more than now than ever, especially the things that are going on. They're talking about the power outages, things like that that are happening. We're we're in a very serious time, friends. Very serious times. So yeah, get get the EMP shield when you click on it. Don't forget if you're going to add something to your cart there. Um, you know, when you go to that cart to put the item in, it's going to ask you right there for that coupon code I N L fifty. It'll save you fifty dollars on whatever you're buying. You just apply the coupon. If you buy more than one, it's going to apply it every time you buy it. So if you buy three items, you'll save 150 bucks. That type of thing there. Um, it's worth it's worth doing. Believe me. I wish I had more actually myself, but it's worth it. God bless you. Thank you for watching. IsraeliNewsLive.org. And by the way, I did write up a little small article on there today about, um, well, there it is right there. Trump to remain president, but Pence not at his side. Michael Flynn, I did was that was actually Mr. Parker mentioned that first, so I have to give him credit for that. But I did was able to confirm that. I think we mentioned that already in the broadcast. It's true. Mike Pence would actually be the new vice president, from what I understand, as of right now. That could change, but that's what I understand as of right now. God bless you and thank you. And you can also donate. Our address is here as well. In an institute, P.O. Box 150, Sunbright, or 156, excuse me, 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872, or you can donate.